Within days of the approval of the ISA 100.11a Industrial Wireless Standard, the ISA 100 Wireless Compliance Institute initiated a multi-vendor installation at an Arkema plant in Crosby, Texas, demonstrating interoperability among multiple vendor tested and approved devices. Arkema is a diversified global chemicals manufacturer that produces vinyl products, industrial chemicals, and performance products. Worldwide, Arkema has 80 industrial sites in more than 40 countries and six research and development centers. Arkema's site in Crosby, Texas produces liquid organic peroxides. Many consumer products that we use every day, ranging from automobiles and food packaging to health and cleaning products, owe their beginnings to organic peroxides. Arkema saw a need to integrate data from across their plant into their control room to improve plant and employee safety and efficiency. The plant, because of its history, has been built in multiple stages. And uh, we got, because of these multiple stages, multiple technologies, and so we got different technologies scattered around the plant. And so the wireless was a, a good opportunity and a good, uh, I guess, potential to centralize everything. Arkema turned to suppliers participating in ISA's Wireless Compliance Institute to install a wireless network based on their interoperable ISA 100.11a industrial wireless standard. The Wireless Compliance Institute is an organization of users and suppliers who are committed to bringing ISA 100 standards to the marketplace in a way that's usable and useful with the initial focus on the ISA 100.11a standard. It basically gives the frame to be able something that you can grow and that you can expand. Basically opens easy application that today we just did not even want to consider. The skeleton of the specification was pretty well settled about 18 months ago and the last year and a half has been spent iterating over you know, improving it, finding issues while in parallel with people building the standard. So that when it was approved on, in September 2009, there were actually completed stacks, completed um, test tools, and we were able to go right out into the field. Arkema identified several opportunities to capture data, improve safety, and enhance employee productivity using the ISA 100.11a standard technology. The .11a standard allows us a lot of flexibility as the user to choose which manufacturer we're more comfortable with. Uh, anything that our techs are more comfortable using, we know that they're still going to communicate with one single system. And we don't have to have parallel wireless systems running throughout the plant. So what wireless will allow us to do is bring our signals back to the control room that's manned 24 hours a day that will prevent people from having to go out and leave the control room at night to go check on other units. Arkema worked closely with their local distributor, Wilson Moore, to design and install the wireless network. We chose the ISA 100.11a because, number one, we have a standard now, and number two, the ultimate flexibility and multifunctionality of the network. And what I mean by that is that we can deploy one network over a plant and compared to other wireless systems available to us today, we can get the most out of that network than any other network. Numerous applications for ISA 100.11a were identified in a comprehensive review of the site. This is building two. It's a negative 10 degree Fahrenheit storage building it's, uh, where we store our final product. So we've been able to use different wireless transmitters. One is in this application, which is for a door switch which tells us when our freezer doors have a good tight seal. And if we don't, we get an audible alarm in the control room. We've also got a wireless temperature transmitter behind me that transmits the temperature of the building back to the control room at all times. The fire water tank level is a Yokogawa level that allows our incident commander to see the level in the tank from anywhere in the control room the gas detector is from Gastronics, so what we've done is added some layers of protection by installing wireless gas detectors that allows us to easily expand our system and expand our coverage. Another application would be the lick and stick sensors uh, by Goosh Engineering that we're deploying in this plant. And this really coincides with uh, some of the benefits of the ISA 100.11a standard 
And that is that not every device in the, in the network needs to act as a router. So we can have some lick and stick sensors out on the edge of the network communicating through routers. And these are lower cost sensors bringing in pressures, discretes, temperatures, analogs. The wireless network infrastructure includes two ISA100.11a backbone routers with the ISA100.11a sensor meshes. This provides multiple redundancy paths and extends coverage to the edges of the facility. So the architecture that we designed for this system uh, really starts at the end devices and that includes the Yokogawa and the Goosh Engineering and the Honeywell transmitters which have really they've established a device mesh. So some are acting as end devices some are acting as actually routing devices for the other transmitters, but they're all meshing. And then those in turn communicate to the ISA100.A backbone routers, which then are uh, really fed through a Honeywell backbone to a Nivus gateway. And then from the Nivus gateway, the data is fed into a Honeywell HS Experian server. And that is where we can see our process data. And we also have a Nivus monitoring host, so you don't need to go out into the plant anymore with a smart communicator or some device like that to configure your device. You can be in the nice, safe confines of your control room where it's either warm or cold, depending on the weather, and, and it's just, it's really simple. The ISA100.11a standard offers end users wireless plant-wide coverage with mesh networking at the device and backbone level, plus an environment to choose interoperable devices from multiple vendors. The ISA 100 committee accumulated a group of experts and dozens of eyes looking at this standard to make sure that it would functionally do what needs to be done to meet the user's requirements and also to make sure that the devices, if built this way, are indeed interoperable. From what I understand, there is a very complex security platform running behind the scenes on this network. But as far as provisioning and putting this system online, it's so simple. It really is a few steps and that's all it takes to provision the system and get the devices authenticated and out in the field. The mesh is important in terms of system reliability because you don't always have a clean line of sight back to your, your multi-node. So what that allows us to do is if we've got difficult locations, you can still put a transmitter there and it can connect and transmit through another one. The system has been operating at Arkema just days after the ISA 100.11a standard was approved. The parallel development of the standard, stacks, transmitters, and compliance tools made it possible to install a working, interoperable, multi-vendor system to realize clear user benefits in the real world. It's always fun to see a system working two weeks after the standard was approved. It's not theoretical anymore. It's, it's out there. It's working. It's great. What's amazing is all these manufacturers were able to come together and it actually worked within two weeks. And your issues were third party, not so much wireless. So when it came down to it, once we got that network working, it was like a little train that could. It just kept on going. The standard, multiple vendors and big players in the industry coming on board with the standard is pretty much the guarantee that it's something that's going to stay. And when you are putting something in place, you'll be able to develop it and grow it.